for any Mac user, yearly OS upgrades are always exciting. I personally look forward to two things. One, what will the next version be called? And two, what features will it bring? Well, in this next video, I will answer both questions and more. Hi, I'm Michael Josh, your gadget matchmaker, helping you find the right device to match your needs. At last week's Worldwide Developers Conference, Apple unveiled the next version of Mac OS, and I've been beta testing it for about a week now. Keep watching, because this might be the biggest Mac update we've seen in a long time. When I first switched to the Mac, Apple used to name its OS after Big Cats. I believe I was using Mac OS Panther on my very first PowerBook. I also remember being in Amsterdam the day Mac OS X Tiger was launched. Here's a pic of me picking up a copy on launch day, because back then you couldn't just buy a digital copy online. Tiger was the first OS launched following Apple's transition to Intel, so it's almost fitting that we look back, because this next version of Mac OS is the first since Apple announced its transition to Apple Silicon. These days, Apple names Mac OS after scenic spots in California, and the next version will be called Monterey, after one of my favorite spots along the stunning Northern California coastline. While the OS looks and feels pretty much the same, you'll know you're running Monterey with this lovely new purple wallpaper. The sign-in window looks different too, thanks to Memoji support, so you don't just have to use a photo of yourself or one of these recommended icons, which have been around for like forever. If there's one big cosmetic change to macOS Monterey, it's Safari, which has been completely redesigned. The goal was to make things look more compact and modern, so the tab bar has been distilled. Everything from the address bar, tools, and tabs take up just a single line, giving you more space for your content. If you're like me and have 100 tabs open at the same time, you can organize them into tab groups. So I have a group for my shopping related tabs, another group for research I've been doing on how to take care of all my new plants. You can customize the look of your start page with a custom background and all of these new features and this new look are consistent across iPhone, iPad, and Mac. So are all your tab groups, web extensions, and customizations, all of them are synced across devices. The Map app gets new features like a new Google Earth-esque interactive globe, a more detailed 3D experience in key cities, and improved transit directions. Should I turn back? My favorite feature coming to Mac OS Monterey and one that I can't wait to try is called Universal Control. Here's how it works. Say you're working on your iMac, obviously there's a keyboard and mouse connected, now, if you place your iPad nearby, you could, with your mouse, move your cursor from your iMac over to your iPad. Click on an app and start typing away. You can also drag and drop files between devices. Apple says you can use up to three devices together at the same time. So say iPad, iMac, and MacBook Air or Pro all at once. No setup is required. Just put your devices next to each other. The feature uses Bluetooth and Wi-Fi connectivity. Speaking of the new iMac, which is one of my new faves, I've always wondered why can't I use AirPlay with it, especially given how nice its display and how great its new sound system. Well, now you can. Simply tap on the AirPlay icon on your iPhone, for example, and you can play a video on your Mac from your phone. You could mirror your iPad screen and draw on your iPad and have people follow along, or deliver a presentation on your phone and use your iMac as a display. You could also take advantage of the iMac's high fidelity speakers and play your favorite podcast or album. While not necessarily a feature that everyday users rely on, automation has long been built into the Mac. If you're a longtime Mac user, you might be familiar with Automator or might have seen its robot icon somewhere. On macOS Monterey, the Shortcuts app is the new way of doing things. You can easily automate tasks like setting up two frequently used windows in split screen mode when you get to your desk in the morning, 
all with a voice command. Automator shortcuts syncs across devices, and if you're on an M1 Mac, you can also automate iPhone or iPad apps. If you haven't looked into automation and shortcuts before, I highly recommend it. You don't need to be a WWDC developer to figure it out. If you are a developer looking for apps to help you build new apps, or working from home and trying to hack your way into being more productive, there are tons of Mac apps and services available out there, but having to decide which one to download or to use can be quite daunting, and juggling the cost of multiple paid apps, expensive. That's where today's sponsor Setapp comes in. No matter what it is you're using your Mac for, like getting better at time management or being more efficient when it comes to creative tasks, Setapp has the right app for the job. With Setapp, you'll get access to all the high quality paid apps for just as little as $9.99 a month. Yep, that's just one single subscription for all the apps that you might need. Just like MarsEdit, which has been my de facto blogging tool for longer than I can admit, and Squash to compress and send large files to my team, or AI-based photo editor Luminar. There's plenty of cool apps here for you to explore. Setapp is your one-stop shop with the best tools on the market. And if you're like me and subscribe to the there's an app for that philosophy, then you can try Setapp for free for seven days. Just click on the link below. Over the last few years, Apple has really taken charge in terms of privacy and keeping us and our data safe. And on macOS Monterey, they've added a host of privacy features. One is called Mail Privacy Protection. Apparently, when a company sends you an email, it can contain invisible pixels that tell the company if you've opened the email, as well as your IP address. A new feature in Mail prevents this from happening. Another feature called Recording Indicator has been borrowed from the iPhone. Did you know that your iPhone will tell you if an app is using your camera and or your microphone in the background? It's up here on your iPhone's status bar. You'll find a green light when an app uses your camera and an orange light when an app is using your microphone. That same privacy feature is coming to Mac OS Monterey. Well, at least the orange light. It'll show up right here beside the control center icon on the menu bar. And when you click on it, you'll see which apps are actively using your mic. Just like on iOS, FaceTime on a Mac gets a whole bunch of updates that brings Apple's video calling service at parity with other video conferencing solutions. The biggest of these updates is the ability to create FaceTime links ahead of a call using the Calendar app and being able to send them to Android and PC users also. Let's see how this works. When you create an event on the Calendar app, you can add a video call, select FaceTime. You can then invite contacts via email, like one would when scheduling a call, or copy the FaceTime link and send it to whomever you're inviting. For iPhone and Mac users, it's pretty straightforward. Clicking on the link launches the FaceTime app. Android and PC users get redirected to a web page where they can take the call from. This is how it looks like on Android, and here's how it looks on PC. There are also improvements to how calls look and sound. You can turn on video blur. So for example, see how my background is messy? I can turn on video blur to make everything look smooth and professional. More impressive is a feature called voice isolation. So for example, you're working from home and there's noise in the background. Say someone is vacuuming nearby. You can isolate just your voice so the person on the other end doesn't get distracted. <sighs> Both of these new features are available from the Control Center. Just click on this icon right here. By the way, Apple is opening up support to both portrait blur and voice isolation to third-party developers, meaning some of your favorite video conferencing apps might be able to get this feature as soon as macOS Monterey rolls out later this fall. Of course, FaceTime isn't just for work calls, and for those using it to connect with friends, SharePlay is also coming to the Mac so you can watch TVs and movies or listen to music with your friends at the same time, no matter how far away you are in the world. You can do this on the Mac, as well as the iPhone, iPad, and Apple TV. 
If FaceTime takes on Zoom, well, the Notes app is getting Slack-like features. We've long been able to share notes between iPhone and Mac users, but now you can add tags to your notes to make them easier to sort through. You can at mention folks so that they get notified when you leave a comment, and you can see all your collaborative notes on the new activity feed. There's also a new feature called Quick Note that lets you copy text or a URL or anything you want to keep a clipping of. When you swipe down on the right-hand corner of your screen, it will automatically save what you've copied as a Quick Note, which are also stored on the Notes app. This feature is similar to what's also being rolled out on iPad OS. Just like on the iPhone, Focus is one of the new headline features of Mac OS Monterey, tools that help you keep distractions on your computer at bay so that you can focus on the task at hand. It's basically an expanded do not disturb mode where you can create custom focus areas based on your answers to two questions, which people are allowed to reach you and what apps are allowed to notify you. That way you can temporarily block off notifications from say, social media apps or anyone who's not a work colleague while you're on work mode. And then you can turn off work notifications when you're not working. Focus syncs across devices, so you just need to set them up once. You can activate focus anytime from the control center and can create new focus areas from the notifications settings in system preferences. Before we wrap up, I just want to say that what I appreciate most about this next round of updates is that most features are not just coming to the Mac, but to the iPhone and iPad too. That makes the experience more seamless than before. This means you're also getting all the new features we discussed in our iOS video, like improved messaging, live text where you can copy, paste, and look up text on images, and visual lookup, which helps you identify landmarks, plants, and flowers, art, books, and even the breed of that cute pet you saw down the street. Mac OS Monterey will be available later this fall and will be supported by the following Mac computers. And those were some of our favorite features coming to Mac OS Monterey. For more videos like this one, you know the drill folks, subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit that bell icon while you're at it so that you get notified as soon as we upload. Follow me on social media for all the behind the scenes fun stuff. And as always, make gadgetmash.com your daily habit. Till the next video, I'm Michael Josh. Thanks for dropping by.